Welcome to Building My Legacy Podcast. This podcast is designed for leaders and entrepreneurs who want to leave a legacy and will provide strategies that focus upon key elements for legacy creation, determining your desired impact and its benefit, increasing your legacy's reach by engaging key stakeholders, planning, prioritizing, and executing. Here's your host, Dr. Lois Sonstegard. Welcome, everybody, to today's Building My Legacy podcast. I have with me today Jay Jackson. He is a consultant and uh, comes out of a military background. And I always find coaches who come out of that interesting because I think they bring to the coaching business a sense of, of really looking for how do you accomplish a result and how do you accomplish an outcome for a client Um, You're also often more driven in terms of systems and how you approach things. So tell us a little bit about your journey, getting um, into the military, what you did, what your story is, um, what took you out of the military and into your coaching business. Gotcha. Gotcha. So first and foremost, thank you, Lois, for having me on as a guest and and giving me the opportunity to be able to share my story and some insights and, and value with your audience. Um, so I, I joined the military at age 19. And to be quite as honest with you, it was an escape from the neighborhood that I grew up in. Um, it was, you know, uh, most of the people who, who grew up in my community, we were accustomed to, you know, drugs and violence and just chaos. And so the military was an opportunity for me to one, either not end up dead or end up in jail. And so I look at it and I tell people it was the best decision I've ever made in my life because I wouldn't be the man that I am today um, without joining the military. Um, It gave me things that, you know, you can't get in other sectors. Like, for example, um, immediately I was immersed into leadership experiences. I was, you know, given the opportunity to be responsible for multi-billions of dollars of resources. And I would have never had that opportunity had I not joined the military. And so the education, training and experience that I gained while in the uniform um, have actually positioned me to be who I am today, to be able to serve people the way that I serve them today in my coaching business. Um, If it were up to me, I would still be in the uniform. But as I'm sure you and and many of your listeners know and understand is, you know, anytime a a corporation to include our government entities, um, they do some restructuring of the organization and they downsize and and they require, you know, smaller numbers to perform their their mission. Um, Some folks have to find their next opportunity. And so I found myself in that position in September of 2014. Um, And I knew I just I wanted to do something new. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to create my own vision, my my own path in life, um, because you you now I had some freedom to be able to do that. And so I've always had the entrepreneurial bug ever since I was a kid from, you know, washing cars and cutting grass and things like that. Um, I even while in the uniform, I started a couple of businesses like a lawn care business and even a food trailer. And I was working both of those pretty successfully. Um, and then once I got out, like I said, I dove head first in entrepreneurship so that I can take full control of my life. And I've been in the co- online coaching business space um, ever since uh, September of 2014. And we've been able to do some amazing things, uh, write a couple of books, you know, travel uh, to speak. We have you know, clients and a team that operate all over the globe. And what we do is at Serve Impact and Prosper, which is the name of the company, um, we help coaches, consultants, and thought leaders create systems to attract quality leads and convert them into premium clients without being slimy, salesy, or manipulative. Um, and so that's that's pretty much, you know, my journey in, into this space. And, and here we are now. You know, um, Jay, that's an incredible gift that you give to coaches, consultants, because they're struggling right now. They're, in a sense, like the restaurant business. They're struggling trying to figure out how to stay alive. So tell me, how do you find people? How do people find you? And how do you grow, help them grow their businesses? Um, well, I find people just through my content, right? So whether it's you know Facebook Lives, whether it's my own show where I interview people and around specific subject matters that my audience need to um, 
need education and information on. Um, but we basically have a lead generation system that allows us, whether it's on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram, it allows us to be able to put our company in front of um, our ideal clients. And the messaging actually speaks specifically to their pain points. Um, and it highlights the benefits of them you know, uh, reaching an agreement and having a relationship with us. Um, and then, of course, we've got a back end system, which is our sales funnel process, which allows us to nurture a relationship with those leads um, through high value trainings. And they're just multiple trainings that we'll put together throughout that entire sequence um, so that we can educate people and demonstrate value to let them know that, hey, we are the solution to their problem. Um, and then, of course, you know, we, we get on a call that way we can better understand exactly where they are to make sure it's a right fit for them, because we understand that not every um, every person isn't a right fit for your program. And so that's why you want to have that conversation to make sure that you get clarity around exactly where they are where they want to be to determine whether or not it's a good fit for to, for you to be, you know, the guide or the bridge to help them get to the other side of the troubled water, so to speak. You know, Jay, that, I mean, that that's an incredible gift that you give people. Where did you learn that process and how did you learn it? Because that's quite a journey in and of itself. Yeah, well, a lot of the, the systematizing of things that literally comes from my time while in the military. Okay. Uh, and so uh, developing systems, you know, uh, systems development process improvement is a lot of what I did there, you know, helping organizations save anywhere from, you know, $250,000 to $2.5 billion that, you know, that was what happened while in a uniform. And then once I transitioned out, I started go to you know different entrepreneurial conferences, online business conferences, and things of that nature. And specifically, um, I went to one that started to talk about, hey, you need systems in order for you to grow and scale your business online. And so once I realized like that was the key, I was like, wow, you know, the military has already, you know, for 15 years, they've trained me, they've educated me, and I have real world experience, you know, on the development of systems. But of course, I didn't really understand it in the online space. But the more I started to study it, you know, I invested in some different coaches and consultants who would, you know, share their uh, insights and expertise with me. And then once I started to visually see it, um, I, I was, it was easy for my mind to kind of put it together, you know, a couple of things about my mind, you know, similar to like an engineer who can kind of see things and kind of map it out. Um, and then once, you know, I started to connect the technology and, you know, my, the biggest challenge for me initially was, um, you know, being able to market and sell myself because, you know, as you know, we don't, they don't teach us marketing and sales in school, you know, Lois. And so, you know, you have a lot of people who are super passionate um, about serving people. They want to change the world. They want to make an impact. And that's what made me say, okay, well, you know, if I'm struggling with this, but I've been able to figure it out, you know, I've been able to crack the code, so to speak. You know, I wonder how many other coaches, consultants, and thought leaders are out there who who need clients, right? And if they can only just figure out how to um, attract their ideal client without stress and overwhelm and late nights and early mornings and becoming, you know, depressed and frustrated, you know, if I could help them, imagine how much more impact that we could actually have and, and our impact would increase by helping those coaches be able to go out and serve more of their people. So, Jay, what are some of the biggest lessons you've learned as you've worked with companies, things that you've learned in terms of what their challenges are that you you really work with to address? Um, the biggest, the biggest challenges are, are like here in this six inches, right? Um, just helping people understand that, you know, you can master and learn the technology. Don't allow the technology to overwhelm you. Um, it's a lot of, you know, our clients say, Hey, you know, I'm not a marketer. I'm not a copywriter. You know, I hate being, you know, salesy or, you know, I don't want to intimidate or pressure people. And so a lot of what we do is we really help our clients understand, like, this is what you um, have to believe if you really want to, you know, get new clients. And then this is what your new clients or potential clients have to believe in order for them to reach an agreement with you. 
Um, and it's just really a, a series of questions that we help our clients, you know, develop um, through, you know, some scripts that we have so that they can ask the right questions and, and really look at it as a trip to the doctor's office. As you know, Lois, right, we go to the doctor's office and the doctor just asks you a series of questions and they're you know basically peeling back the layers of the onion so that they can get to the root cause of your problem. And then at the end, they basically offer you a solution. Now, we don't offer any pills, right? So we don't we don't offer any medication, but I try Try to tell our clients, hey, look at your service as the Tylenol to someone's headache. And if you look at it as the Tylenol to someone's headache and you're there to serve them, all of the pressure around the sales process goes away because you truly understand that, hey, I'm here to serve you. I'm here to help you. I'm, he I'm here to help you overcome a challenge or a problem that you have. And so the biggest issue is, is really just those six inches and in, in helping people identify, okay, hey, here, here are the gaps in your business. Let's come in and let's plug those gaps. And then these are some of the things that you, the, you know, we're done redundant things that you're just doing over and over again, and they're not um, basically revenue generating activities and they're not getting you results. So we help you remove those things from your business. You know, I think that's one of the hardest things to do is to know what things to remove. Right. Right. So Absolutely. how do you help people go through that process? Um, the very first thing is, and that's part of that, that call that I was referring to is we literally sit down and we'll map it out. Right. So whether it's, you know, if it's a Zoom call, um, we can sit down and I can pull up our screen and we'll literally map out like, OK, show me what you have. Right. So from the back end of your which is your offer, we'll take a look at your offer and then we'll basically reverse engineer that entire process. And we'll move from the back end to the middle portion, which is your sales funnel, the technology, what tools you already have available to you. And then we'll move into that front end portion, which a lot of that is your marketing message and what lead map. Magnet, um, you're utilizing to help people, you know, come into your online store, so to speak. And so once we map it out visually, that's when we can literally take a step back and say, okay, you know, these are the gaps, like this is what you're missing. Is it, um, is it a scheduler, right? Um, are all of the different pieces of the technology connected together so that it's a seamless process so that your potential client Clients go through a journey, you know, that's a, it's a friendly journey because that's what you want to take people through is a friendly journey where from start to finish, they have clarity around who you are, what it is that you can do, and they believe that you can help them solve their problems. And then, you know, all of the redundant things that you're referring to when we when we map it out as well, we look and say, hey, look, you know, that's an extra step that you shouldn't have in your process, or this step needs to be here um, to simplify your process and we can show up your your sales cycle and shrink that down. So now it doesn't take, you know, 30 days. It might take you 13 days. Got it. So who are the best kind of clients for you in the consulting and coaching space? Are there some that are better than others or ones that you can be more successful with or they can um, be more successful? Absolutely. Um, those who want to get results, um, that's the, the, you know, ac action taken leaders. Um, that's the biggest thing, Lois. I think a lot of times, you know, you have people who make an investment and they don't actually take any action on what you're advising them to do. And so then they don't get the results that they anticipated. And of course, they, you know, don't want to take responsibility for the lack of results. And so they blame, you know, someone else. And so what we like to work with is uh, people who truly are action takers, they believe that that their services solve real world problems. Um, and they do, they truly, sincerely want to serve people. They truly want to change the world and make an impact. Um, those are the people that, that we really love to work with. So as you work with that, tell us, give us an example of some, somebody you've coached and worked with that you just delight in because they soared. They, you saw wonderful results and how you went about that. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so there, there's one young lady. Um, so she specifically, um, she teaches diversity and inclusion. And so specifically with, with her business, one, she was trying to figure out um, what we were just talking about is how does she create a system that allows her to bring clients directly into her business? And her biggest struggle was she hated, she just 
she dislikes automation. She just, she thinks it takes away the personalization of the entire process. And so again, back to those six inches, right? Um, we basically sat down with her and we showed her how to utilize her own stories and how to utilize video to convey her story so that her stories allow her to resonate and, and build a relationship um, through the online technology um, in such a way to where she can be able to speak to her ideal client. Um, and so once we help her put her system together, she started to consistently, you know, attract quality leads. Um, her sales calls went from, you know, hey, I'm just, you know, talking to people who are, you know, kicking tires and, and really just, you know, looking for freebies is what we like to call those people. Um, and then now she's consistently bringing in, you know, two to three clients every single month. And she works a whole lot less now because we've shown her how to get a virtual assistant um, to help her with, you know, the managing of her calendar and things like that. You know, that's, I, I think one of the hardest things when you're in business for yourself as an entrepreneur is really how to manage that time mm -hmm. and knowing where to spend your time, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's. You're, as a CEO of your, of your company, and I know it's a difficult transition, especially when you've been you know, working in corporate America for quite some time, you have to really shift your mindset around you know, how you organize your day. Um, I tell people quite often, you, you can't manage time. You can't speed it up. You can't pause it. You can't stop time. But what you can do is you can actually schedule your priorities. And I think a lot of times that's where a lot of people go wrong is they're not crystal clear on their priorities. And the best way for you to get crystal clear on your priorities is to really get clear on your values. And once you're clear on your values, you say, okay, you know, these are the things that are important to me, whether it's my faith, my family, the lifestyle that I want to live, um, the quality time that I want to spend with my friends. Once you're clear on those things and you start to get clear on your goals, you know, your revenue goals for each quarter, um, you map out, you know, your, your um, strategy around, you know, hey, these are the products and services that we're going to promote this month. And this is what's going to help us, you know, achieve our quarterly goals. And then our quarterly goals help fit into the plan of our overall 12 month goals. Once you're able to map those things out and you're able to get clear on, on each step of that process, um, your time, right? It, it, it just, it really becomes a tool for you to utilize. And then of course you set some boundaries around, you know, keeping your time to yourself so that you can focus on those revenue generating activities so that, you know, you don't become overwhelmed and burned out. So for you personally, Jay, what brings you the greatest joy in what you do? Uh, seeing people succeed, <laughs> seeing, seeing other people go from, you know, that place of, um, you know, just vague, you know, kind of, you know, cloudy, you know, in, in terms of, hey, I, I have no idea how I'm going to get out of this. But then once they have that that first win and then they finally get, you know, re-energized and they realize like, OK, this is what I've been missing the entire time. And then they started, you know, start to make progress and they start to move forward and their entire life changes. Right. Their energy starts to change. The vibration that they're in changes. Um, so that's that's really what brings me the biggest joy and satisfaction in what I do. So as you talk with people, with our audience, things that you would love for them to know that you think, oh, if only that, you know, people would think about this before they start, what would that be? Um, get, get clarity around who you are. That, that would be the very first thing. Get clarity around who you are because once you have clarity around who you are, that's what allows you to show up um, as your best self. Um, and that way you can be authentic in everything that you say and everything that you do. And that authenticity is what allows you to attract those people who are your people, um, who, who truly want to work with you. Um, but it also, it, it repels those who aren't your people. And, and that way you're only having a conversation with people that you are here to serve and that who are ready to receive what you have to offer. So the very first thing I would say is just get clarity around who you are, do some self-examination type work um, and really dig deep uh, on your stories, like look back over your lifetime and identify your key stories. Um, and then once you've identified your key stories, if you want to add the stories of others, that's totally okay as well. Um, that way you can speak um, to people from a space of authenticity and really connect with people. 
You know, I think um, that combination, Jay, of uh, really looking at what people's needs are and then looking at producing results, that is, I think, one of the most um, sought after but missing piece in what's out on the internet right now. And so, you know, it's, it's just that reminder that you give everybody that's listening the importance of results. If the coach you're going with and working with isn't focused on results, you perhaps won't get results either. You may feel better, but you may not have results. And in the long run, you'll that feeling good will evaporate before too long because you can't survive off of that alone. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, trust me, I have had my share of experiences where um, someone promises something and they're not able to deliver on that promise. Um, so that's what the, the one thing I would say before anyone selects um, a coach or a consultant to help them in their business is in your conversations, just listen very closely. Um, you know, people will tell you exactly what their focus and their priorities are. For example, um, there was a gentleman who was trying to recruit me to come and be a part of his business. And one of the questions I, I literally asked him is, you know, how do you see me fitting in and, and how do you see me you know, winning? Like what what kind of results can I expect? you know, from this. And each time I asked that question twice, we have like multiple conversations, but I asked that question specifically twice. And, you know, neither time he was able to share with me what I can expect to receive or win from this. And if you're looking to hire someone and they're not able to articulate how you're going to benefit, how it's going to be of value to you, um, then that's not someone you want to go with because they're only focused on themselves and how they can win. Um, and in the space that we're, you know, we're in, Lois, we our responsibility is to make sure that the people that we serve, we have a responsibility to make sure they win. And, and that should be our number one priority. Well, you know what, that's, it's so refreshing to hear you say that because I think you can search very hard sometimes to find that. And when you do, it's such a breath of fresh air. Jay, Absolutely. for you right now, as you um, think about our audience and um, entrepreneurs that are out there, what would you like to say? What would you like them to hear and to know that you think is just really important for them? in terms of their own growth and development? Um, you matter. You, you, you matter. And, and just keep going. Uh, believe in yourself. Keep going. Your, your message matters to someone. Um, I know when I first started this process, I, I literally said, if, if I could only just get one person. Um, and then once you get that one person, you realize like, hey, there are other people um, who actually need what you have to offer. And honestly, um, there are people who are listening and watching and you're influencing and you're impacting them in a positive way. And you have no idea. Um, I've had people reach out and say, hey, you know, I've been following you for several years and I've watched your growth and your maturation or, you know, hey, I remember you made this post, you know, three years ago and that stuck with me ever since you made that post three years ago. So my advice is just, just keep moving forward. You matter um, and, and, and don't stop because there are people out there that need what you have to offer. For you, Jay, your next chapter, what will that be? How will you uh, continue to grow? My next chapter? Um, uh, being able to to really reach a larger audience, Lois, you know, just just collaborating with um, other thought leaders, other coaches and consultants um, and being able to, you know, leverage each other's tools and resources and audiences. That's the, what the next chapter looks for, for me. Um, like right now, um, I set this big, hairy, audacious goal. And I don't know if it'll happen in our lifetime or not. But my, my, my vision and legacy is to transform one billion lives. And, you know, we're going to do that through webinars, through podcasts, through, you know, movies and things of that nature. Um, I actually, you know, was a part of a, my first documentary film a couple of months ago, and we're waiting for that one to be, um, to get released. And so for me, it's a content constantly just about my own personal growth and, and doing everything that I can to, you know, achieve that mission of transforming 1 billion lives. So for you, Jay, what does it mean to have lives transformed? What does a transformed life look like? 
Uh, me, <laughs> a lot of transform life is is me. Um, it's it's a I believe uh, change and transformation are a constant thing. Um, oftentimes we don't realize that we're going through some changes and transformation, and that's because we're not being intentional. And so a transformed life is where you can look back and you can say, okay, I remember when I used to think this way. I remember when I used to behave and show up and operate this way, but I no longer think that way. I no longer operate that way. And oftentimes you'll go through some transformations and you'll go through some, some what they was known as quantum leaps. Um, and you won't even realize it. Um, the people, some people around you will realize it and they'll say, wow, you know, um, some people will be happy that you've changed. And then some folks will, will not like the fact that you've changed simply because it highlights, you know, who, who they still are. And it highlights the fact that they have not put in the work. Um, and of course, that's not your fault. But you have to continue to you know, put in the work, your personal development, your own personal growth. Um, and as you continue to grow and evolve, you'll begin to experience those personal transformations. OK, so I am very curious, Jay. <laughs> you have already done a documentary. You have this goal of reaching a billion lives um, through webinars and podcasts. Um, I don't know. Does um, Tony Robbins have a billion people watching him? Um, I'm not sure if he's reached a billion yet, um, but he is. He's definitely moving in that direction. <laughs> uh, but and that's exactly um, you know kind. Of, I would say a model um, that that I, I follow and, and pay attention to. A lot of the things that he does. Um, they're they're identical to what I want to do, whether it's you know feeding people in different countries, building schools um, in different countries. Um, you know, being able to do webcasts and, and virtual events where you're able to still influence thousands of people. Um, he's, he's definitely a model to, to follow behind. And I'm not sure if he's made a billion yet, but I would imagine he's, he's got that type of ambitious goal, no doubt about it. He has. I'm sure he does, too. And I, I uh, admire the fact that you have put that out there and that that's part of what's driving you. Um, it, Without a vision, we never get someplace, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's 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 without a vision, people perish, right? And so that's that's literally. Um, I don't want to perish, Lois. I, I don't want future generations, whether it's my family, you know, generations or people that um, I'm not related to. Um, I, I do want to, you know, leave this earth, and I don't want my life to mean something. Um, I don't want to just be here, and you know, and. Look, I, I pray and hope that I can get to at least 100 years. Um, and if I do, I, I definitely want to give everything I've got every second that I'm here on this planet. Wow. Transformed. I am still stuck on what that means a little bit to you. Okay. Um, because it means so many different things to many different people. And we throw that word around somewhat lightly. So for we, you, when you talk about a really transformed life, what does that look like? When a person um, transforms their life, what do they become? Um, they become a, a, a new a new person. Um, so like there's a, there's a, a scripture, Romans uh, 12 and 2, and it's one of my favorite scriptures where it talks about be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? Don't conform to the ways of this world. And I can tell you, Lois, I, I used to conform to the ways of this world. <laughs> um, you know, if it was pop culture, I was plugged into it. I wanted to be a part of the crowd. I wanted to be, you know, a part of, you know, the popular, you know, things that happen in this world. And I realized that that's what the masses do. Um, that the masses conform, and and it's not to no one's fault. Um, we're we're all conditioned by, you know, our our parents. We're all influenced by our family and society and the experiences that we have as, as we're growing up. And we don't realize that you know we've been conditioned to operate a certain way. And for me, a transformed life is saying, hey, I no longer want to be a part of 
the status quo. I no longer want to be a part of the masses. I want to stand out and I want to be a leader and I want to show up in a way that allows me to be able to take my gifts, my talents and the light that I believe God has given me um, and help other people, you know, break away. Um, I believe we all have greatness within us, Lois. I, I truly do. I believe at birth, we're all given exactly the tools that we need. But unfortunately, those those tools are um, and those gifts, they're basically stuffed, smuffed, snuffed out. Um, and that's just because we're, we're told that you shouldn't stand out. Don't believe that you're great, you know, fit in, you know, stay in this structured, you know, way of doing things. And I think someone who breaks away from that and starts to lead a new life, that's a person who has been transformed. Got it. Got it. So you have a, a lot of work ahead of you to do that. May I ask you, what's the name of the documentary that you're going to be in or that you are in? Uh, so it's by Sports Masters. That's that's the name of the company. And I'm not even 100 percent sure on the full final title just yet. Um, but the company is called Sports Masters. What they basically did is they took several um, professional athletes and military veterans. Um, and what they wanted to do is they wanted to tap into the mindset behind how we excel. Um, and just basically talking about, you know, how we approach our day, um, what are some of the things that we've done to develop healthy habits um, and what puts us in that peak state, um, and, you know, talking about mindfulness and things of that nature. So that, that's actually an excellent question. Like, I don't even know the final name of it just yet, um, but it's, it's brought, to a company, uh, brought to us by a company called Sports Masters, and they're based out of Canada. Great. So, Jay, do us a favor <clears throat> as that evolves and you get to know what the name is and when it's going to air, let us know. We'll let our audience know that it's out and where they can go to watch it. I think that's wonderful. Absolutely. We'll do. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We're almost out of time. So I just want to ask you, what else would you like to leave with the audience that we haven't talked about yet that you think is really important for them to hear and know? Um, life is a journey. Uh, we're, we're, we're all children on a journey. Uh, I literally I was having a conversation with someone a few days ago, and I, and I was basically explaining to her that if you look at life as if we're all on this one big highway, and some each of us are just at different mile markers, regardless of what the subject might be, regardless of what our level of understanding is in that subject matter. You know, I'm at one mile marker on, on, on a particular subject. Lois is at a different mile marker on that same subject. And if we would just give each other that understanding and grace and say, hey, look, you know, there's nothing wrong with that person. They're just at a different mile marker. Right. And I can either make a choice and say, hey, I'm going to wait for them to you know catch up and get to the mile marker that I met, or I'm going to pass some information or I'm going to pass them a rope so I can pull them up to the mile marker that I met. And so I just want to leave people with the understanding is that, hey, we're all children on a journey. We're all at different mile markers. Give yourself some grace when you see that other people are at a couple of mile markers ahead of you. Um, and don't forget about where you've been and always reach back and help pull people up. Wow, that's great advice. Always remember where you've been and reach back, pull people up. Don't go back, just pull them up and move yeah. on. I think that's Absolutely. the danger we, many of us get into is we end up going back and we don't we don't remember how to get out again. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Jay, it's been wonderful to have this conversation with you today. Thank you so much for being with us on Building My Legacy podcast. And to all of you who are listening today, thank you for being with us. And please remember to go visit our website at buildtomorrow.com and our social media outlets as well, buildtomorrow.com. Jay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You've been listening to Building My Legacy podcast with Dr. Lois Sonstegard. To book your appointment with Dr. Sonstegard, visit www.buildtomorrow.com.